Hi, my name's Lindsay Leach and we're going to be talking today about the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is something that we believe or expect to be true. So for example, we know that bees make honey, but this knowledge could stand trial against an alternative counterclaim. For example, wasps make honey and we call this the alternative hypothesis. Now let's imagine we have some evidence for each of the null and the alternative hypotheses. Here on the left, the null hypothesis and here on the right, the alternative hypothesis. Now we have to assume that the null hypothesis is true, unless it can be proven to be wrong. So as we start to sample from the population of interest, it may be that the weight of evidence starts to fall in favour of the alternative hypothesis, and increasingly so until we accept this new knowledge as truth. But if we accept the alternative hypothesis, we have to re reject the null hypothesis, and the same would be true in reverse. To define what our null and alternative hypotheses are, we need to think carefully about the question. Here's an example. So in this example, we have a survey which showed that the average male baby in the UK weighs £7.12 ounces at birth, but a midwife in a Birmingham hospital suspects that the birth weight may have increased in recent years and collects some data to find out. So as we said before, the null hypothesis is what you would expect to see. So based on the survey, we would expect that the average birth weight in the population, the mean mu is equal to £7.12. So that defines your null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is the new idea. So in this case, the midwife believes that the birth weight has increased in recent years. So the alternative hypothesis mu is greater than £7.12. So we could have used a range of alternative symbols here, depending on what the midwife wanted to test. For example, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or not equal to. Let's have a look at another example. Pause the video now and have a go at writing out the null and alternative hypotheses yourself. So in this example, the vending machine should dispense bottles of water. We expect to contain 500 ml. So this defines the null hypothesis that mean mu for the amount of water in each bottle is equal to 500 ml. But the service engineer suspected that the amount in each bottle was actually less. So again, this defines the alternative hypothesis, the mean mu being less than 500 ml. So the engineer then went on to collect data which could be used to test this hypothesis and to decide if the null or the alternative should be accepted. In this next example, I want to show you how the null hypothesis is commonly the no difference hypothesis. For example, there may be no effect of a treatment on a variable. There may be no difference between groups, for example. So in this example, we have the null hypothesis that there's no difference in birth weight between babies born in Birmingham hospitals, mu B, and babies born in Nottingham hospitals, mu N. But the alternative could be that there is a difference. So this is where something is interesting is going on. In this case, the birth weight is different between babies born in the two locations. Mu B does not equal to mu N. So to recap, the null hypothesis is what we expect to see based on the knowledge that we currently have. But the alternative hypothesis is the new idea, and this could overturn or nullify the null hypothesis.